Hello everyone. In today's video presentation, we will discuss about force system in space. In particular, this discussion will focus on the resolution of force into components along the three mutually perpendicular axes, the X, Y, and Z axis, using the most appropriate method when the direction of the force is given in terms of the coordinates of the points from which it is directed or in terms of the angle that the force is making with respect to the three mutually perpendicular axes. To start with, let us imagine that we have here a space defined by the three mutually perpendicular directions such that you have the x, the y, and the z axis. And from this space, we have the origin defined by the intersection of these three axes and whose coordinate is 0, 0, and 0. Assuming that on this space we have a point whose coordinate is defined by x sub a, y sub a, c sub a, and the point is given by a symbol a. The distance between the two points can be computed in terms of the, of the component of each distance in the x direction, in the y direction, and in the z direction where the value of that distance d shall be equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared and that the value of x shall be the difference between the coordinate of a and the origin. Thus, x shall be equal to x sub a minus y sub, x sub 0 y shall be equal to y sub a minus y0 and z shall be equal to z sub a minus z0. Let us assume that on this point OD, there is a force that is directed in this direction. Then this force will have a component along the x direction defined by f sub x. It will also have component in the y direction defined by f sub y and a component in the z direction defined by f sub z. The relation between the component and that of the force that the component of the force will, li will be like the side of a rectangular box that will be formed when okay, when the force is resolved into its component f sub x, f sub y, and f sub z, just like what you are seeing in this illustration. Now, how do we compute for the component of force in space? The component of f in x, in y, and in z are proportional to the x, Y and Z components of the distance between the points where the force is passing. As such, we can say that the ratio of F sub X or the component of F along X to the component of the distance in the same direction X is equal to the component of F along Y to the component of the distance in the same direction and also equal to the component of f in the z as to the component of the distance in the same direction. And this is also equal to the ratio of the magnitude of the force to the magnitude of the distance between the point where the force is passing. Similarly, we can compute for the magnitude of f to be equal to the square root of f sub x squared plus f sub y squared plus f sub z squared. Now what about if the component of the force in space 
are computed such that the direction of the force is given in terms of the angle that this is making with respect to the three mutually perpendicular axis. Let us imagine that we have here okay, a force that is directed in this direction. This direction is given in terms of the angle that this is making with respect to the x-axis as defined by this theta sub x. It has also okay, the angle that it is making with respect to the y-axis defined by this angle. And so with the angle that this is making with respect to the other axis, to the z-axis, defined by this angle. So in this illustration, the direction of the force is given in terms of the angle that this is making with respect to the three mutually perpendicular axis. How do we compute for the component of that force in space? So the magnitude of this Fx, which is the component of F, along the x-axis can be computed using the relation between that F and the angle that it is making with respect to the x-axis and that magnitude shall be equal to fx equal to the magnitude of f and the cosine of that angle that that f is making with respect to the x-axis. Similarly, this y component of f which is directed along the direction of y can be computed using f times cosine of theta sub y and that this component of f directed along the z-axis is equal to the magnitude of f multiplied by the cosine of the angle theta sub x. Summarizing the relationship, there is the relationship that the ratio of f sub x to the cosine of the angle that this is making with respect to the x-axis shall be proportional and that should be equal to 1. Meaning, f sub x to cosine of theta sub x is equal to f sub y divided by cosine theta sub y shall be equal to f sub z divided by cosine of theta sub z and that all are equal to 1. Furthermore, between this theta sub x, theta sub y, and theta sub z, there exists a relationship such that the cosine square of theta sub x plus cosine square of theta sub y plus cosine square of theta sub z shall be equal to 1. This relationship is very, very useful because there are instances wherein the direction of the forces can only be given in terms of at least two angles that this is making with respect to either x, y, or z axis. Whenever you are given at least two angles, the third angle can be computed using this relationship. Maybe we can have an example on this concept by having this problem. A force F having a magnitude of 300 Newton passes from A having a coordinate of negative 1, 4, and negative 2 towards B having a coordinate of 3, negative 3, and 1. Find its component parallel to x, y, and z axis. So, let's start solving this problem by identifying the given. So, what are given in the problem? We are given here the magnitude of the force and that is equal to 300 Newton. Since force is directed from point A to B, it is good to consider the coordinates of point A at 1, negative 1, 4, and 2, and the coordinate of point B at 3, negative 3, and 1. And here, we are required to find for F sub X, F sub Y, and F sub Z. To facilitate solution of this problem, it will help if we can draw the illustration of F and the position at which this F is directed. Let us imagine that we have here the three mutually perpendicular axes defined by X, Y, and Z. Let us establish the position of point A at negative 1, 4, and negative 2 such that we have here okay, the 
By the way, let us imagine that uh, differentiate the xy plane so that we have here the xy plane that is colored with this k uh, plane. Let us imagine that this yc plane is defined by this color and we have this y x a plane defined by this color. Now let us try to establish the position of point A by looking at their position. We have a negative 1, 4, and negative 2. This n gives us the position of point A whose coordinate is at negative 1, 4, and negative 2. Now let us try to establish where it is located, point B. It is located at B, positive 3 along the x-axis, negative 3 along the y-axis, and positive 1 along the positive z-axis. Here is our point B, having a coordinate of 3, negative 3, and 1. According to the problem, from A, there is a force that is directed towards B. Hence, there must be a force directed, and the magnitude of force is equal to 300 Newton. Now, let us now try to solve the component by establishing the distance between A and knowing the, coordinate, uh, the uh, component of the distance between the two. So, let us have solving for the distance between A and B. Solving for X, X shall be the difference between X sub B minus X sub A. So, when substituted with the value that is equal to 3 minus negative 1. And that gives us a value equal to 4. Solving for y, y must be the y component of b minus the y coordinate of b. And that is negative 3 minus 4. And that gives, you, give, gives us a negative 7 value. Similarly, we can solve for z being equal to the z component of b minus the z component of a. And that gives us a value of 1 minus negative 2, which gives us a value of positive 3. From these three values of x, y, and z, we can compute for the distance between a and, D, a and b, and that is equal to the square root of x plus the square root of y plus the square root of z. Substituting the value and then simplifying, we have d equal to the square root of 74. Then, using the relation that the component of the force is proportional to the component of the distance between the points from which the force is directed, then substituting that value in this relationship, so we can have the value equal to f sub x divided by 4 shall be equal to f sub y divided by 3 shall be equal to f sub z divided by 3 shall be equal to 300 divided by the square root of 74. And from here, we can solve the value of f sub x at 1,200 over the square root of 74, f sub y at negative 2,100 over the square root of 74, and f sub z at 900 over the square root of 74. And to understand this component, let us imagine, let us try to draw it okay, in the illustration. This value that we are seeing is the component of f along x. And it is directed along the positive x-axis because the value of the component is positive. f sub y is directed downward because the magnitude of f sub y is negative. And f sub z is also positive, hence it will be directed towards the positive z-axis. And to imagine how the three forces are related to the force, then the three force must okay, represent the side of the box that will be formed with F as its diagonal. And here is the illustration. This becomes now the relationship between the F and its component along the three mutually perpendicular axes. I hope that with the short presentation I have prepared for you, you are able to understand the process of resolving force into components. If you have questions about the topic, you may subscribe to this channel and post your comments 
so that I can answer your questions in my next video presentation. Once again, thank you for watching.